check two this is it welcome to the cannabis coffee hour with your host me rob cantrell coming back for another episode number two three four Who's at your door? Some more cannabis. Some more coffee. Oh yeah, back up off me. I got a glass of seltzer. It's popping real good. I got me a bag of coffee. Oh yeah, it's warm and toasty like wood. (laughs) I'm so excited to do episode two three four we're in the afternoon this is danger zone people this is uh running a little wild solo mission uh afternoon coffee you know at my age it's a little you know you gotta watch it a little bit but i'm sipping i'm sipping on a last bit of cup see what happened is i i did have a a couple people in mind to do the podcast and we were going to do it outside but it rained and, you know, I do love doing the solo podcast. The thing about my podcast, The Cannabis Coffee Hour, like and subscribe, call your mom, um, is that uh, it's weekly. You know, I try to do them either Thursday or Friday. I'm thinking about maybe I start dropping on Monday or Tuesday. I don't know. We're going to switch it up. You know, the thing I like about this podcast, it's very DIY. There's nothing more punk rock than this podcast it's just me uh a four track mic uh a bag of fat beans of coffee i got some seaworthy even keel um coffee shout out to uh producer tim um for hooking it up um with even keel uh seaworthy tim uh my boy uh producer tim matson who is working very hard to keep me uh, having tons of coffee and tons of herb. (laughs) And it seems to be working. And we seem to be doing more and more podcasts. And uh, I just love, like, learning. uh, I got this new microphones uh, and learning to do with the levels. You know, I'm doing all the editing. Tim isn't doing any of the editing. He's just calling, getting some coffee and, and sending me some herb and helping me with some of the creative stuff on the back end right now. But uh, we're lining up some, uh, If we're definitely lining up some um, um, sponsors. So hit me up at contact at Rob Cantrell and I'll forward it over to him. But uh, on with the program, we are drinking Seaworthy coffee right now. And this is called Even Keel. And I have to say, I, I've been going on a real coffee and cannabis love of late. I mean, I know I do have a podcast about it, but I like, I'm starting to fiend for my coffee a little too much. (laughs) Like I love it. And I love dark chocolate. I don't know. Uh, I think it is good for your soul or your heart or, but you just got to watch it. You just got to watch it. I timed it out. What happened was I might be a little jumpy on this podcast what happened was I already had one full even keel. It was so good. See where the I did the the pour over. I crushed the magic beans. I did the pour over, and um, and uh, and it just oh man, I can just froth it out so good. I did a rush. I rushed this afternoon cup, but in the morning I could slow roll it. Uh, I'm definitely need to film one some of that for the podcast. Uh, definitely need to do some bumpers for the podcast. This one I think is going to be only uh, audio at this time. But I also like doing the visuals. We're going to do a little bit of animation going forward. Uh, I'm excited about um, tinkering with. This really is just my pas- passion par- project. I got some great cannabis I want to talk about. But first I'm just talking about this coffee. Seaworthy. Um these guys were beyond cool they got me a good cup i'm drinking out of the cup i got a big fat bag and you know i've tasted coffee all over the place i've done this podcast for 234 episodes and you know i might not be the biggest but i've drank the most coffee and the most diverse coffee 
You could find an episode of me drinking everything on this podcast. Uh, lots of seltzer, lots of kombucha, kombucha, some booch. People try to hate on the kombucha, man. I went to this bar and I asked for some kombucha and, I, and it was a total like bro dude uh, uh, IPA type of joint. And the guy gave me such a stink eye for even I said, well, give me a ginger ale, man. I'm high. What do you want? Fucking, I don't want to get boozed up and cross-legged on this joint. I just want to have, my new move is seltzer with a lime. I'm like, oh, can I have a big glass? Of... And then I pay whatever they want and $2 on top of that. I'm like, can I get a seltzer with a slice of lime? If you're out and about and you're stoned out of your ass, that's a good move. And you don't want to drink the booze. I'm not hating on the booze. I've been actually thinking about a dipping my toe back into the booze and having a beer. I heard one story about like like very selective drinking uh, can also combat um, Alzheimer's. And I also found that cannabis could do that. I think everything in uh, a little bit of moderation. Now that's that's just some seltzer right there. That's some soda stream hand pumped. I pumped that seltzer myself through a bicycle pump that's how i make seltzer i just have a bicycle pump and i just start working it man uh and i got it hooked up to a uh tub i got it hooked up actually to my sink and that has a that, that has a tube that comes out and i make organic <laughs> seltzer uh no i just got a soda stream which is a I, I, shout out to soda stream soda stream uh will save plastic bottles I think about the future. I mean, we're all evolving. We're all this. Everything is getting so wild. And uh, in terms of like uh, media, politics, um, comedy, um, and space exploration. (laughs) Uh, A lot of talks of aliens these days. I haven't run into an alien. I haven't run into a ghost. Um, I've been more on the Zen tip. I've been more on the, cause I think those things are distractions. Everything's kind of a distraction. I've been, I mean, I kind of fell off meditating like for one or two days. It's, I swear to God, it's just like working out. You know, when you start working out and you're like, oh man, I'll never stop working out. I'm workout king. I'm on point every day, all day. Every other Friday, I'm doing knees. Every other Saturday, I'm doing shoulders. Uh, You got it all timed out. You're feeling good. You're pumping blood through the heart. That's the same thing with meditating is like in some days you just feel funky in the gym and some days you just feel funky trying to meditate. But I did, I went on a good three day stretch of like doing 20 minutes raw dog, Uh, (laughs) which means like, you know, no listening, no nothing. I just like close the door, I sit and I just work on my breath. And now I've even moved beyond counting my breath and just going one. (laughs) <laughs> when I take a breath like and that's all in the in and out like through my nose just one way to like occupy your mind while you try to get your mind to settle that's what I've been uh, working on with my meditation but I want I don't want to put motherfuckers to sleep let's drink some more of this uh, delicious afternoon coffee afternoon coffee can like uh, it's a good buzz uh, um especially if you've been running around like today has felt like three or four days in a row um i had to take my cat to the vet thank god uh she was all right i just got to get her some ointment for her eye but that worked out but that was really stressful uh yeah she freaked out pissed and shit all into the, <laughs> the carriage I had to clean that out so one of those things that counts for a full day uh, once you have to start, but everybody picks up at if they're their animal. I don't, you know, I was just, uh, you know, I'm just glad she's alive and, uh, doing her thing. Uh, and I'm glad I am alive and doing my thing, which is, uh, sipping on this great coffee. Um, and I got some great cannabis. I actually went to a new dispensary in Union Square and the prices are pretty good. Um, I, I have to say, I like the dispensary cannabis in New York City. You know, I think a 
you know, I'm trying to figure out the purpose of this like podcast because uh, cannabis popularity is going in and out. You know, I've been doing it for ever in terms of comedy and like, trying to align myself but now it's kind of like so normalized um i think the gig now is like how do we make it a little bit normal into society i guess for myself and uh that's what i always thought about like doing a podcast doing the studio time doing the drinking coffee time doing the rambling talk time you know, these are the two best elements for all of that, which is coffee and cannabis, which is, uh, you know, kind of my gig um, for this podcast here. But what I'm saying is I'm slowing down and I'm speeding up. <laughs> Hence the cannabis coffee hour. Um, but no, I, I went to this great um, travel agency, Union Square, it's super organized. It's super cleaned. I was super clean. I was super impressed by the staff. Um, it was a little bit of everybody. It felt very New York, but also very safe. Uh, the, you know, people were saying that it's too high end, but the prices weren't that bad. I mean, the eighth was under 40 bucks. Um, and it was, you know, really, really, really good. Um, cannabis sun-grown can it's exactly what i've been waiting for actually <laughs> it's been super safe and they have like test results and uh and everybody was kind and it was super organized and the prices were great so shout out to the travel agency union square um i looked them up they have a manifesto um but yeah, it seems to be like a couple big investors, um, all New Yorkers, female. Um, and then, yeah, the staff was multicultural. Uh, um, it was a l little bit of everybody. Uh, and uh, manifesto, everybody needs to get away sometimes, away from the noise and stress and Sunday scaries to sanctuary, to a sanctuary of Zen or perhaps inspiration. Now there's a way for everyone to reach these destinations safely. A way to transport and transform thousands of lives. And it doesn't require a plane or a passport. Let us be your guide. To worlds both known and unknown, plan your next vacation with us at Union Square Travel Agency, where we sell cannabis, period. <laughs> yeah shout out to the, these dudes they know what's up um yeah i'm impressed i'm impressed with the uh quality of cannabis the professionalism it was better than you know i even have to say better than michigan and better than in california in some ways um they did have like you know how the government's it's just everywhere is a little bit different like the I, this thing is exploding but it's not automatic money and it's not without problems, the cannabis movement or the cannabis um, legalization in New York, definitely. Um, there's only f a few, there's a new um, dispensary opening up, like a legal dispensary opening up in Harlem that I read about, um, which is exciting. Because most of it was the housing works, and then there was like something, and then dazed over at Union square and now this place so i ha highly recommend this place this is the most uh professional uh, you know they all have their own vibes but again i have to say that the new york upstate cannabis is really great for me because it's all sun grown you know it's outdoor um this is this is uh, Harney Brothers. That's the jar that I got. I got this cool glass wooden jar, and it had a great eighth. And this was a company, Harney Brothers. And the THC, you know, I don't like to go up to like 21 or 22. I like it under that. Um, but I also like outdoor grown cannabis. And this is Timeless Greens, grown, growing the finest cannabis, uh, proudly based in Millerton, New York. Um so these are the growers. Uh, Simply Sun, our sun-grown cannabis is an ode to all things natural. Good soil, good seeds, and good sun. That's the gig, man. 
Um, I've had the, this cannabis is super strong, but it doesn't knock me out. This is kind of I kind of had like one of their better higher end ones that I tried. Um, the Harney Brothers. Um, I definitely, you know, like I said, it was under forty. Um, it was great flower. Yeah, I tried the MMXX full panel. And then they even have, like, lab results. Like, this thing is so breaking down to, like, what's actually in there. So there's no pesticides, no... um. They also talk... Like, if you get black market cannabis, like, that's the thing about rank uh, weed. Like, you know, not to say that I haven't. But at the same time, um, I do remember doing for all those cannabis cups... And uh, one of the things was um, if they had mites, like sometimes they have bugs. And that's what these lab results make sure like your weed doesn't have bugs in it. It doesn't have any funky, uh, you know, especially with the street stuff now. It's just it's it's just crazy out there. So, yeah, I applaud and <laughs> I'm side eyeing uh, New York uh, cannabis legalization. I mean, it's happening but there's only few places. But the places that have popped up have been really good. And then there was an event in Brooklyn. Um, I'm going to try to go to a couple more of these uh, cannabis events. That's where I should be popping up and doing some uh, podcasts. Like I'm using this uh, Zoom mic, um, which is like a four, it literally like a four track recorder that takes batteries. So now, you know, I've gotten used to it doing out, doing all these episodes. I just want to say a shout out to all the guests that I've had on the recent episodes. Please check out the YouTube, the Cannabis Coffee Hour YouTube, because that's where it's at. Um, and definitely subscribe to that. But I'm trying not to tell people what to do anymore, you know? I'm more on, you know, I'm just going to do my thing and uh, keep the pod running, um, keep sampling some coffee, keep sampling some cannabis. You know, it doesn't have to be smoke heavy all day, every day. I'm definitely going to incorporate a little bit more music and art. Uh, You know, just kind of slowly upgrade it. Uh, Because it is like having my own little spaceship. (laughs) That's how I see uh, having my podcast. It's like it's my own little art um, audio spaceship that's flying out there into the internet. Which is the wildest and the most depressing place in the world. No, it's it's out there, you know. Um, but we're all out there. But out of all of them, I do enjoy a good podcast now and then. Um, I just say have to say shout out to the Harney Brothers. Great, 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 great cannabis. I mean, I've, I've roasted like a few bowls before the podcast. And I kind of s- closed all the windows because of sound. Um, just to keep it, you know, keep it a little chill, but, uh, I am enjoying some of this coffee. I mean, I mean, I'm not smoke boxing the place up. Um, I'm more trying to get really good sound, (laughs) good sound, good herb, good coffee, uh, great dispensary. You know, everybody's talking how negative the world is going, but you know, it, it feels like we're dancing on some type of tightrope where if we we just keep on getting tested. And I think, you know, it's always going to be that way. You know, it's always, there's always something. There's always something. And that's what's cool about being more mindful and getting your Eckhart Tolle on. <laughs> getting more in the moment because... Um, you know, you just kind of practice that beginner's mind, you know, that's the thing, I talk so much shit about, like, being around, and, uh, you know, being a Gen Xer that's seen it all, done it all, but really, I, I feel like a new person every day, and sometimes I, I even forget who I am, and that's kind of the point when you really get to this, like, level of beginner's mind with meditation is, like, I know I always talked about, like, positive thinking, but it's not even positive, I think. It's more of like an even keel, like nothing vibe uh, on the inside, like quiet that thing and then dance with the outer thing, you know. 
But now I have a podcast. You know, I, I'm learning how to shut my mouth out there in the universe. But now I have a podcast. I got to tell that to people. Uh, but no, that's kind of the gig um, for me. For me. Oh, man. Seltzer, coffee, herb, um, and music. I've been pumping up. I actually got to do a podcast this week with a uh, shout out to Mike Doty from Soul Coughing. I'm not sure. I don't want to blow up. The, I know. I know. I mean, once the word hits this podcast, uh, but no, I, I you know, um, he's doing he's doing like a music thing. Like I, I don't I'm think I don't think I'm blowing up his spot, but he's doing like a th music thing and he's putting together uh, a project and he invited me in to talk music. And it was specific songs. And the song we picked together was hilarious. And it was awesome. He's from the band Soul Coughing. So I just hung out with him. And that was dope. So I thought I'd bring that up on the podcast. But I had it written down. But I don't want to act like I'm bragging. But it is like kind of trippy just because I used to listen to so much Soul Coughing. These these are the t uh, uh, move upside. Let the man come through. Uh, that guy, he was telling me that song was in the Michael Jordan documentary. Like, man, the royalties on that alone. Um, but he also, uh, you know, he did this big song, Circles. Uh, but I remember him from all those others. It, one of my favorite songs by Soul Coughing was uh, $300. But he has some, his other solo work. Uh, check out the, the Cannabis Coffee Hour Music Appreciation. Um, I have a, a music list there. What do they call it? A playlist. Playlist. I've been putting together the playlist of just tunes that I like to stone out to um, or have been influenced by of recent. Because music, it, for me, it always goes up and down and around and round. And I'll be like hung up on one or two to three songs for like three weeks. And then I move on. But the one that's been sticking to me lately is Set It Off by Strife. This is electric funk. I believe it's Strife. But set it off to the left, y'all. Set it off to the right, y'all. Set it off. <laughs> set it off. <laughs> Google that. If you want to get into electric funk area, uh, definitely pump up some Set It Off by Strife. Um, I definitely want to get some beat machines uh, introduced here on the podcast. That's kind of one of my goals uh, is to do that. I might pack a little bit more herb uh, for the final bit. Uh, yeah, so check out robcantrell.com. You don't have to, but that, if you want to see me perform live. Lately, I've just been, uh, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't gone and picketed, but I, I for SAG-AFTRA, I'm on strike, um, but I will. I am going to do that. I just called a couple of my friends and, um that are doing it and i said text me before they go i want to go with somebody i don't want to show up so <laughs> but i've been i've been hitting the like button on all the pictures people have been 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 putting up so that's that's good too uh, but yeah i'm down with the unions that's a big deal i would like to get back to work on that shit i was having fun doing tv shows um that was like a, you know i was like dancing you know i have to say you know, a lot of my dreams in terms of performing and getting up and i've gone way and beyond um some of, at first like i've said to people is like i just wanted to have my name on a flyer <laughs> i thought I, I just wanted it to be a dude in life that one had one time had his name on a flyer and uh that looked kind of artistic and punk rock and cool and let me tell you, you get into stand up you get a ton of those but i didn't know that when i got in this is just how everything has evolved over the years I didn't know it was going to go into having my own cannabis and coffee podcast where I make dub beats for uh, <laughs> and read Wikipedia and read uh, samples of uh, great um, herb products. Um, yeah, man, this I'm trying to think, not trying to think, but uh, I, I've had that jar and they the harmony. I want to make sure I'm doing everything right. Oh, let's see. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, the Harney Brothers, Sun Grown Flower. This is the MXX. Yeah, this is 
75% indica, 25% sativa, 18% THC. Like, how great is that? That's, that's, I don't know if you're going to get much better than that. I don't know if you're going to get much better than that, because it gets you up and about, but also chills me out. And uh, and these dudes look like some older dudes. That's the thing that I read. You know what the biggest market that's grown in cannabis buying in New York is? Is women over 65. I, I bet you a billion dollars, man, with all their knee problems and all the, you know, you know, shout out to all the older ladies. I'm getting old. They're, they're all my friends. I don't let them. Don't tell them I know to said that. But uh, yeah, that's a huge market. I know Whoopi Goldberg can't stop hitting the bong. At least that's what people say. I don't know. I, Howard Stern does a funny bit on it. Um, my buddy John works over there. I think he does the impression. But I do know from my uh, my high times people. I never ran into uh, Whoopi, but I would. I would totally kick it with her. Um, I grew up in all that 80s. Uh, yeah, uh, what was it? Comedy. What was the big, uh, what was the big Robin Williams, Billy Crystal comic relief? Yeah, that was, you know, I don't, I, ne I mean, I've seen parts of Color Purple and then I've seen this, the Nun movie. There was a couple other movies. She just went into like, one man show and then she get, got into movies and was super funny and then she did comic relief with billy crystal and robin williams and that was such a big deal i have to say like and i was a big fan of hbo in the 80s and that's where you would see all the best comedy and comic Re relief would have them all together on the same lineup but then they would do like in between it, it would be a bummer because they're talking about homeless people. It'd be like Robin Williams on Coke going off for like 20 minutes. And then they talk about homelessness the next 10 minutes, uh, which was also sad. So, yeah, I don't know. But it was a great, great charity and classic and some of the best comedic uh, stand-up performances um, were done there. I mean, it was just a high bar had to be famous to be on the lineup. And then you're talking Billy Crystal and Whoopi Goldberg and Robin Williams. And weirdly enough, they had good chemistry, which is cool. And it worked. And it was funny together. Like, they supported each other, which is hard with comedy. Those are three different uh, comedy acts right there. Whoopi Goldberg, more of like a sketch actress monologue one woman show type lower east side 70s 80s art vibe uh robin williams is just like supreme comedian but also he was like a high-end actor you know he was in uh juilliard he was a juilliard the, the thing about robin williams he was hilarious but he was like a juilliard uh trained actor from a highly educated and uh, kind of upper echelon family in the Bay Area. And he just had a vocabulary and a stage presence. And then the comedy boom of the 80s, um, you know, was so, you know, he just jumped on and exploded with it. And then he was a good actor. So they put him in movies and he killed it. Uh, World Courting to Garp. Like, that's a, like a super drama. Like, he did all these movies, which is such high pressure. Um, R.I.P. Robin Williams. It's definitely one of my first loves of comedy was that Robin Williams special. The Robin Williams special on HBO at the Great American Music Hall was, uh, yeah, I remember I could sit there vividly and remember watching that with my dad uh, and him laughing and loving it. And then Eddie Murphy's Delirious, I think was like right then as well or the year after, or, you know, right around that boom of 80s comedy. Um, those guys were so hilarious. Uh, but yeah, what was I talking about? I need to get out to California. Uh, since the pandemic, you know, I haven't been touring that much. I've been building up this uh, new act, and uh, 
new show and I'm starting to work it out. And so I'm just like working in all these, you know, arty, weird or just, you know, Brooklyn shows. But I'll do some comedy clubs coming up. But right now I'm kind of it feels like I'm starting over every day. I think the pandemic, I think everybody has that in their career or in their life is like you're constantly pivoting. <laughs> they, they're going to call this the, the, the five, the decade of pivot, the pivot decade. Where are we pivoting to? Where are we going with all of it? That is what you should not be thinking about. You should be thinking about um, how good this uh, this moment is. And this moment is great. Shout out to Harney Brothers. Um, shout out to Seaworthy Coffee Roasters. But the Harney Brothers have this sun-grown flower from... Oh, man. Okay. We're going to have... It just says, Grind, Pack, Light, Inhale. Cannabis Flower. Long stay, stay, long standing purveyors of hospitality and fine tea, Michael and Paul are honored to warmly welcome you to their cannabis f- family. Yeah, I think this these dudes make tea. I think I've had Harney Brothers tea. You know, they would definitely know how to grow some good cannabis. So it's got like two gold lions in a wooden top. It's packaged right. Shout out to the Harney Brothers. Yeah, I just had some. It's amazing. Tastes great. It's not too strong, but it's just enough. Um, Yeah, like I said, I really think New York has the right idea, but they haven't executed it perfectly. But I don't think anything in life is going to be perfect. Um, So you just got to keep it moving and grooving. I would try to open up the window and hold this... uh, recording device so that was my aw- awe <laughs> my little awkward pause there but uh oh yeah let's have a little bit more coffee a little bit more cannabis i am uh yeah ch- check out my website for shows subscribe to the youtube check out uh Check out Set It Off by Strife. I don't know if I'm even saying that, but that's some good electro funk. And definitely, I've said that before. (laughs) I was going to plug going to the YouTube page, but I'm done plugging. I'm done plugging. We are only, uh, we are only doing herb. But the only thing is this, I might be chilling out, you know. This is mostly indica, 75% indica. That's why I've been sleeping so good. <laughs> oh, I have been checking out this dude, King Shiloh, who is uh, the reggae dub sound systems in England. And uh, yeah, man, this dude, he builds these speakers. He's like this white dude from England, but he plays like dub reggae and smokes a spliff and carries the sound system everywhere, and he pumps it up like, you know, a DJ in in Jamaica, which I have no problem with. It looks like one of the funnest things to do ever. I definitely want to do some DJing or some live dub beats. Like I I said, I am looking at some, um, some beat machines, and I would like to get that incorporated. So when I am, like, um, firing up bowls or hitting bongs or spacing out into the universe, I can put on some beats in the background and kind of fill it in a little bit. You know, I think the the podcast world needs to get shaken up. A lot of this stuff, all the Instagram stuff, like everything is kind of looking like the same thing and the same big dumb pictures and the whatever. But this podcast 
dude, we just planted this seed. We just growing it. We're putting some water on it. We're testing out some uh, bomb ass cannabis from Hudson Valley. Forget about it, kid. We're talking about doing uh, meditation and mushrooms. Well, definitely, you know, there's definitely going to be some more mushroom talk on this. Shout out to Rufat. Man, how good were those episodes? He was such a fun guest to have on. And I've had some awesome guests on this podcast. Uh, But Rufat uh, Agaev, there I go, I said it right, Agaev, um, is one of my favorite dudes on the podcast. Yeah, he just trips me out. Let's see this. Yeah, he did two in a row. We went over to his place, and then we had Danny Danko in the park, and uh, then we did a solo one. Then we did uh, Dave Hill. Before that was Jordan Rock. But, you know, pop in some solo ones in there and flex the solo muscle. I always, uh, you know, sometimes I ramble on on the other podcast and I'm like sometimes I don't think I need a guest I, I feel like just talking here's uh, I have like this is my trick for meditating now is like I just picked up a free Buddhist book that was in one of those things like like in Brooklyn they have like these little houses that have free books and this was 360 Zen they had like a Zen Buddhist thing for every day. So I pretty much just read a random thing and then I meditate. And I don't even put my mind on that, but it just kind of sets my mind up. Um, let's see what this is. Humans' lives go along with circumstance. It's not necessarily to reject activity and seek quiet. Just make yourself inwardly empty while outwardly harmonious. Then you will be at peace in the midst of frantic activity in the world. Word. That's what I was talking about. Um, hmm. I just got some weird update. <laughs> uh, that might be... Uh, yeah, computers are getting so... Like, I had to do this update. I had to do this other update. Okay, okay. Something was to say. That could be a fake one. That's the only thing about the uh, AI that I worry about is the spam. The spam has gotten so good. Like, everybody just has an email account. And then right now, it feels like it's just getting sprayed. Man, people's email accounts. Oh, my God. Um, there's just so much junk out there. Um so much junk there's so much junk everywhere on the internet you almost want it, but we all have to deal with it um that's how you're listening to this podcast but i've no i you know i'm not a hater on the on the uh on the internet uh it has helped me out and uh i won't even say her name because i have her connected but you know who i'm talking about because you can't say it out loud or she she hears you but it stands, you know, A L A, you know. Oh, we're all tied in. Uh, we're all in this together. Um, we're all dealing with a new frontier, a new life, a new energy force. It's just a trip that this is like how my life has. I mean, I love it that the, you know. There's, I have plenty of coffee. Like that's the thing is, I've seen really, really old people drink coffee. But I've seen little, really old people smoke cigarettes, too. Uh, but I think it does keep you up and moving and and uh, and grooving. Ooh, I, th- I thought I was going to sample this cup of coffee, but, I, you know, I just drank a lot of it. So I might have to hit some more herb in order to go with, to bed tonight. Uh, or I'll be jumping around. I haven't taken a walk to today, so... Yeah, I've been taking a walk. Here, what about this? Like, nobody listens to music anymore when they're walking. Like, or they are, you know. I never jumped on the ear pod. I probably will here soon. Um, I was late on the phone. I was late to the flip phone. I was late to the iPad. But 
at this point, I'm not even intimidated by it all because I can apply myself. And that's what I find about this new technology. It's really user friendly. So you just have to mess with it a little bit. Um, and if I can find the time to mess with it, I can learn it. But I haven't got on the iPods because when I, or the ear pods, um, because what I've learned is like when I go for a walk, I like not listening to music. I don't know if that's a getting older thing, but uh, m- definitely when I start going into nature, like I want to like feel the quiet. Like that's a lot of it. A lot of it's just getting out and about and breathing in that good air, seeing that beautiful blue sky, pumping that blood through your through your heart, moving and grooving. Uh, don't stop, won't stop. Ready on the left, ready on the right. I've always loved that. <laughs> ready on the left, ready on the right. Uh, been loving watching the 50 years of hip hop. You know, I, I gotta say, man, in that Run DMC is just ahead of ever. I don't know. LL Cool J's killing it. Uh, I loved LL Cool J doing Houdini. There's a ch- there's a video out there of LL Cool J rapping. I believe the freaks come out at night. It's amazing. Shout out to LL Cool J. I should have gone to see that concert at Forest Hills. I'm bummed that I didn't do it. I, I will. That's that's something I could do with this podcast is go to concerts. Because I'm thinking like, how can I make this funky? How can I make this fresh? How can I make this different than all the rest? And one of them, we're going to get some funky drum machines in here. Second of all, we're going to go out there into the universe. I almost had a couple people I was going to be in the park. Um, But we're also going to go to some different coffee shops uh, and do some shit. uh, Mix it up. Um, definitely some dispensaries. Shout out to uh, the travel agency Union Square. Shout out to the Harney Brothers Cannabis. I highly recommend uh, Harney Brothers. Dude, just roll into just just roll into the, the travel. If you're in Midtown Manhattan, it's right there in Union Square. Like this is so wild that it's happening. Like I've always wondered, like. I moved out of California right when it started going legal. And I was like, why am I doing this? Like, I'm one of the bigger stoners I know. Why am I moving out while this stuff is getting legal? And then I got popped here in New York City. Like, I did three nights in jail in New York City in the tombs. For half a joint. It was actually like, a really got me was like a clogged one hitter that was in my pocket. The other dude had the bag of weed. <laughs> Oh man, I gotta have that guy on. I see him on my Instagram. I follow him. Um, but we have to have an anniversary. That was 2007. I did three nights in jail for a half a joint. And now it's widely legal. Um, it's one of the biggest selling things happening in the tri state area. Like you think it's just New York, but no, it's New Jersey. You know how many people? I know huge stoners from New Jersey, Massachusetts. But it's not everybody. That's like there are a lot of stoners, but there's not everybody. And I don't even even like that label stoner. Like I always want this podcast to be like you can smoke or you can't, can have some coffee or you can't or you don't want to. Whatever the vibe is, it's more of not to use the word, but a safe space, but more of like an organic space. That uh, yeah, it's a place that you can smoke some weed and drink some coffee. Have a nice, have a nice coffee. Have a have a have a deep conversation if you want. Have a conversation about frogs if you want. Have a conversation about the universe, seltzer water, you know. Uh, but with that, I love you, everybody. Uh, peace and love, and uh, I'll check you out. I'll see you out. I'll see you out there. I'll hear it. You know what I mean.